chapter 35 and 36 we're going to cover before we get into the life of Joseph. The Bible in Genesis is about to make a transition from one generation to the next generation. Let's dive into the word. Then God said to Jacob, go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob takes his family and he leaves. We learn in chapter 34 of a tragedy that had taken place of how his um, Jacob's sons, two of, two of them did something that was very violent towards a city that had done something violent towards their sister, and because of that, it made the family obnoxious. So Jacob is leaving the area. God is telling him, you need to leave. Verse two, so Jacob said to his household and to all who are with him, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. He says, I'm tired of these false gods that you have in addition to God. You, the Bible tells us, I love it in the New Testament, you can't have two masters. You'll love the one and you'll hate the other. You'll serve the one and you'll despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. In their culture, mammon was the God of money. You can't serve God. You can't serve the creation and the creator. You can't serve the creation and the creator. You have to choose. He says, we're serving the creator. We're serving God. Get rid of all the junk. Verse three, then come, let us go up to Bethel where I will build an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I've gone. So they gave Jacob all their foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears and Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. Then they set out and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them so that no one pursued them. The terror of the Lord fell on the towns that had heard of what had taken place and no one pursued Jacob or his family. And Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar and he called the place El Bethel because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and was buried under the oak outside Bethel, so it was named Alan Bakuth. After Jacob returned from Paddan Aram, God blessed him again and blessed him. God, excuse me, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation, a community of nations will come for you and your kings will be among your descendants. This is the same promise he gave to Abraham and Isaac. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you and I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at that place where he had talked to him. Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him and he poured out a drink offering on it and he poured oil on it. Jacob called the place where God had talked with him Bethel. Your Bible may have a subheading where it says the death of of Rachel and of Isaac. Basically, Jacob's beginning to travel and return to Bethel, and some historical things are taking place. It's telling us some timelines as the Bible is beginning to transition to the next generation, as I alluded to earlier. Verse 16, they moved on from Bethel. While they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. This was Jacob's 12th son. This would be his final son. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't despair for you are having another son. As she breathed her last breath for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Onai, which means son of my trouble. But his father named him Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. Rachel in her death called him son of my trouble and Jacob said, no. Israel said, his name will be Benjamin, son of my right hand. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. So when she died, um, he buried her on the road. He buried her as they traveled. Um, she, did, she was not buried with him. She was, um, this is significant, you know, Abraham was buried with Sarah, Isaac was buried with Rebekah. When Rachel died, he buried her along the journey. They did not preserve her body for Jacob to be buried with her. Um, it says in 21 that Israel moved on again and pitched his tent beyond Migdal Eder. While Israel was living in that region, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah, and Israel heard of it. So one of the women that was one of the servants that had given um, children to Jacob that Rachel and Leah had provided to him, Reuben, his firstborn son, went and had relationship with her, which was seen as inappropriate and an abomination. And it says that Israel heard of it, but it doesn't say that he did anything about it. It's interesting um, that the Bible throws in this detail. There would be prophetic things that were spoken later and this moment would be alluded to. It's very possible that the Bible threw in this detail so that we would understand later when the prophecy was spoken. Or it's possible that the Bible showed us this to show that Israel did nothing about it. And as I alluded to in earlier stories, there's something about Jacob that seems to go with the flow a little too much and that bad things would happen and he would just roll with it or there would be tension or drama and he would just roll with it. There were some times in his life that 
there were opportunities where he could have taken a stand, but he chose not to. And, and I'm not saying whether he was right or wrong. I'm just saying that sometimes there's moments in our life where we can just roll with it, and we think that by rolling with it, we can ignore it or fail to acknowledge it, and it'll just go away. And a lot of times, problems like that don't just go away. They have to be dealt with in a healthy way. It says that Jacob had 12 sons, the sons of Leah. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Rachel's servant, Bilhah, Dan, and Naphtali, the sons of Leah's servant, Zilpah, Gad, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Paran Aram. Jacob came home to his father Isaac and Mamre near Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac stayed. Isaac lived 180 years. Then he breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people, old and full of years, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Isn't it interesting that Isaac gave this blessing decades ago when he thought that he was going to die, and he lived this entire time? It's really interesting. Um, sometimes we think, you know, our time's coming to an end in one season, and God's like, no, it's not finished yet. And sometimes, you know, seasons are shorter than we expect, and sometimes they're longer than we thought they would be. We need to trust God's timing. I love how it says Esau and Jacob came and buried him. Chapter 36 talks about the line of Esau and talks about um, different people in the lineage. And we're going to roll through it real quick before we get into chapter 37 and go into the life and times of Joseph. Chapter 36 says, this is the account of the family line of Esau, that is Edom. The Edomites, the Edomites were people who didn't serve God and were a thorn in the side of God's people. This is from the line of Esau that didn't serve God. And because of that, from generations to come, they would be a stumbling block and they would be a hindrance and an opposition to those that were in covenant with God. Esau took his wives from the women of Canaan, Adah, daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Oholabamah, daughter of Anah, and granddaughter of Zibion and the Hivite. Also Basamah, daughter of Ishmael and sister of Nebath. Adah bore Elphaz to Esau, Basmath bore Raul, and Oholabamah bore Jehush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in Canaan. Esau took his wives and his sons and daughters and all the members of his household as well as his livestock, all the other animals and all the goods he acquired in Canaan, and he moved to a land some distance from his brother Jacob. Really speaking to the prophecy that Israel, um, not Israel, excuse me, that Isaac had spoken over Jacob, Israel that Esau would eventually move out from the yoke and would break free from the yoke of his brother Jacob. And it says that Esau went his own way, that he moved his own way. Their were possessions were too great for them to remain together. The land where they were staying could not support them both because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. And it goes on to continue and talk about the account of the family line of Esau, and it names all the different names of his sons and the different chiefs. Um, I encourage you to go read it if you're, you know, if you're reading through the Bible with us just so that you can have read through the entire Bible. But I'm not going to go through the next 30, 40 verses. It's just name after name after name that talks about the line of all of his different kids. Um, at the end of the day, all that you need to know about them is that Esau was the father of the Edomites, and the Edomites were a thorn in the side of God's people. Um, we will see that continually through the rest of the Torah, um, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and we will see that really when one generation doesn't serve God, the next generation isn't raised in the things of God, and it really created a tumbling effect or a domino effect, if you will, of people who served false gods. But Jacob, Israel served the Lord, and out of his family would come the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, but not after. There was a tough time of slavery for 400 years in the land of Egypt. And we are going to learn in the last few chapters of Genesis how all this came together in God's timing and in God's master plan. Be blessed today.